In preparation for making this video, I posted a poll on my YouTube community page asking subscribers how familiar they are with Riga brand turntables. And I was somewhat surprised to learn that less than a third of the responders said they were very familiar with Riga, with the rest of the responders stating that they pretty much only know the name in passing, but not much else. You know, I think that's really a shame because Riga Research have been making amazing hi-fi gear for almost 50 years. Perhaps they're not as well known as they should be because they don't ever advertise their products. Riga Research is a British manufacturer that currently makes a wide range of analog and digital audio components. You can actually buy a complete Riga system, soup to nuts, entry level to some pretty serious money. Riga is one of those distinctly unique, quirky British brands like Lin and Name, Meridian, Cord, and Quad. Like the others, their emphasis has always been on engineering and sound quality, rather than flashy designs and trendy features. But Riga's products have always tended to be more focused on value for money, unlike the other brands I mentioned. The company was founded by an individual named Roy Gandhi, who had his own unique ideas about how audio components should be designed and sound. Four years later, Riga launched the product they built their reputation upon, the Planer 3. It became known in Europe as one of the best tables to own if you had high-end aspirations on a limited budget. I discovered Riga during my stay in England during the 1980s and 90s. Although they've never advertised, as I said, Riga has been the darling of the British hi-fi press, retailers, and enthusiasts for decades. Not surprising as British punters are well known for their frugality and are extremely chuffed to get a nice piece of kit for not a lot of dosh. I bought this Planer 3 last year from an older gentleman who was sadly parting with his hi-fi gear due to illness. It's in pristine condition and even came with the original box. But to be honest, although I liked it well enough, I found my other turntables to be a bit more intriguing and it actually sat unused for months at a time. Let's take a closer look at the Planer 3. It was in production from 1977 to 2000. Riga went with a lightweight and rigid wood composite plinth rather than a heavy high mass one as a way to control unwanted resonances. They believed then and now that high mass plinths absorb energy that degrades sound quality. The Planer 3 also has a minimalistic design. No suspension, just three basic rubber feet that screw in. It has a standard 33 RPM motor, and if you want to play 45s, you remove the heavy glass platter and move the belt on the pulley. Under the platter is a plastic or polycarbonate subplatter mounted on a high quality bearing, which goes directly through the plinth. Now, color wise, the Planer 3 was available in any color you wanted, as long as it was black. The tinted cover does not have hinges with springs as it simply employs gravity to hold it up in the open position when you push it back. Obviously, I'm not the first person to notice that there's some cost cutting going on here. Back in the 1980s, Stereophile magazine reviewed the Planer 3, stating that it was a triumph of engineering over the laws of physics, and it's a miracle that it sounds as good as it does. The star of the show, however, is the award-winning single piece cast aluminum RB300 tone arm, which is considered a genuine feat of engineering at its price. Introduced in 1983 and priced at only 90 pounds, it became a favorite among enthusiasts, often mounted to the much pricier Lin LP12 and other higher level turntables. This really is a fine turntable as it is. I appreciate the looks and simplicity. Fiddly devices can be a bit of a turnoff to me. It's a no frills design, but still well engineered where it matters most. Riga knew they had an ace in the hole with the RB300 tone arm. Its strengths could overcome the budget constraint of selling of a selling price of only 300 pounds. Now, how do companies 
cut costs of manufacturing. One way is to use plastic parts rather than more expensive metal ones. In the planar three, the two most obvious places where this occurs is in the subplatter and the belt pulley. They're made of plastic. I don't think the MDF plinth cost very much either. They drilled three holes in it and then covered it with black laminate. Now the rubber feet are not height adjustable and do not impress. Did Riga go with just three feet to save money? I don't think so. Using the tripod design does prevent wobble, especially when the feet are not made with high precision, which these are not. And I've always appreciated how well the Planar 3 performed, but it never really wowed me, I guess. However, I must admit, I never actually done a serious A-B comparison between any of my turntables. From my experience, the cartridge you choose has the greatest impact on the fidelity of the music extracted from your records. But you know, I'm wondering how much does the overall design of the turntable affect its presentation of the music? How does the tone arm, platter, motor, plinth, and power supply influence things? What about the wiring, cables, feet, mat, belt, and head shell? Proper turntable setup is also very crucial not to mention the regular maintenance and keeping the stylus clean. Geez, it's no wonder so many people jumped onto the CD bandwagon and abandoned records in the 1980s and 90s. Anyway, when you get down to it, turntables are actually pretty simple devices. And at the same time, extraordinarily complex. You know, in the physical analog world, turntables are a collection of parts and mechanisms designed to work together in close harmony. When something is misaligned, mismatched, or worn out, it's fairly easy to notice. A well-engineered turntable should sound good and function properly. All aspects of the components should be considered to ensure they operate well together, even when built to a constrained entry-level budget. Anyway, I started seeing posts about Riga turntable mods and upgrades a while back, and it definitely got me thinking about doing something with my Riga. You know, I made a video last year about a, about a tone arm's vertical tracking angle, or VTA, and because the Planar 3 doesn't have adjustable VTA, I ordered a product by Origin Live in England, which added that feature to my model, and yes, it actually works as advertised. I also checked out some interesting Riga upgrades by a company called Tango Spinner, and being the intrepid YouTuber always looking for topics to make new interesting content, I reached out to them and asked if I could try out some of their upgrades for the My Own Devices channel. And Gus the owner did express keen interest and said he would send me some Tango Spinner products to try and evaluate. And to be frank, I had not fully explored the Tango Spinner website to discover where they are based. Imagine my surprise when only a few days later I received a message from FedEx that a package from Argentina was arriving the next day. That's right, Tango Spinner is based in Tigre, Argentina. Now I see the Tango name connection. Anyway, the kitty sent me included now, <laughs> it's a mouthful, Zirconia High Lube Subplatter with a ceramic zirconia oxide ball bearing a VHL bearing sleeve with an isolating damper cap, a dual 33 pulley, Boca Universal adjustable isolator feet, and two opal clear silicon belts. The first thing I unpacked was the largest item, the Zirconia High Lube Subplatter. It definitely feels more solid and substantial than the polycarbonate stock unit. This looks well engineered and has a nice and shiny aluminum finish. There is also a silicone decoupling ring around the top edge. And this isn't the only one they make. There are several others to fit the many Riga models past and present. The bearing shaft is extremely interesting. You would think that an upgrade would be made of some kind of metal, right? But Tango Spinner went for a material called Vesconite High Lube, which they say is 
a highly advanced thermopolymer that wears 10 times better than bronze and has its own internal lubrication for an exceptionally low friction coefficient. And I looked up this stuff and I found that it's often used in difficult operating environments, in particular marine pumps and dirty wet places. It's a very cool space age type material and the nylon cap is said to damp vibrations that may resonate up through the bearing. Well, the first thing I need to do is to remove the belt and then pull the subplatter out from the bearing housing. It's a bit of suction there. There we go. So that's the uh, subplatter. It's got a metal here, got a metal shaft. And I believe it's metal up here at the top. But the rest of it's very lightweight, very lightweight plastic. Next, I will need to flip the turntable over and remove the bearing sleeve. I'm using tape here to cover the hole, preventing oil from dripping out. And while I'm under here, I will quickly remove the original rubber feet and replace them with the Tango Spinner Boca Universal Isolator Feet. All I do is unscrew the old ones and then screw in the threaded plastic inserts and then screw on the nice new aluminum feet. You finish by sticking on the three little silicone pads to the tips of the feet. I remove the original bearing sleeve by loosening the nut that's been holding it snugly in place for over 30 years. And you know what? It did not want to come out at first. Eventually, after considerable effort, I managed to coerce it into popping out of the plinth. I then inserted the new Vesconite Hilu bearing sleeve from underneath, added the washers, and firmly screwed on the nylon cap. On a side note, while I was under there, I decided to open up the motor housing and replace the old and deteriorating rubber band that holds the motor in place. I found an excellent replacement at Ace Hardware for only 55 cents. Flipping it back over again, it was time to change the pulley that spins the platter. As you can see, the original pulley is made of plastic and the new one is made of a premium quality brass. This pulley accommodates two belts for improved platter torque and speed stability, but you do lose the ability to play 45 RPM records, which is fine for me. I don't own any 45 RPM records and I have no plans to get any. Tango Spinner sells two speed pulleys if you need one. They also offer a three belt pulley. This was way easier than I expected. The old pulley pulled right off the spindle with very little effort and the new one just pops back on the spindle. However, after reading the instructions again, I removed it and poked a small amount of silicone sealant into its hole to hold it in place. After letting the silicone on the pulley cure for a few hours, it's time to insert the shaft of the subplatter into the sleeve. Now on the left is the new ceramic zirconia oxide ball bearing, and on the right is the old original one. I dropped the new one inside the shaft, followed by two or three drops of oil. 
Then I coated the subplatter shaft with a couple more drops and carefully inserted it and spun it. It's a tight fit, so it does take a few seconds to reach the bottom. And it, after that, it should spin smoothly and silently. Now take the two silicone belts and position them around the outer edge of the subplatter and then over and around the pulley. Okay, we are finally near the end. The last step is to place the glass platter onto the new subplatter followed by the original Riga felt mat. You know, that whole operation actually wasn't too challenging. No special tools were needed and the instructions I downloaded and printed out were, were well written and easy to follow. Now I must mention here that there were a couple of hiccups along the way. At first I didn't realize Gus sent me the sleeve, ball bearing, and subplatter already pre-lubricated and ready to go. So I wasted some time cleaning it out and then re-lubricating the whole thing. Also, initially the twin belts were causing the pulley to rattle a bit on startup, which was kind of weird. But Gus suggested that I gently stretch the belts a little with my fingers a couple of times and that did the trick. The Tango spinner parts are a significant upgrade to the original Planer 3. And I do like that the improvements are mostly under the hood. It's always been sort of a sleeper turntable, high performance with an unassuming exterior. But now it may be even more so. You may be asking now, well, how does it perform? Does it sound better than before the Tango spinner upgrades? Well, this video is long enough right now, so I've decided that I'm going to promptly make a part two, which I actually give you my impressions of how this whole thing turned out. You know, Riga's done a few updates to the Planer 3 over the past 30 years since this model came out. So, in the next video, I will compare mine to this newest version of the Planer 3 and explore their differences and similarities. I will also do a direct sonic comparison between the two Rigas as well as with a few of my other turntables. It should make some interesting viewing. I'm, you know, I mustn't dawdle making the video as I must soon return this unit to the local Riga dealer, House of Stereo in Jacksonville. Remember, if you dig these kind of videos, there are plenty more like this to come. Please consider subscribing to become a MODer or modder and give the video a thumbs up. I'm also pretty active with my Instagram account at myown.devices, so consider going there to follow my wild and crazy hi-fi antics. And as always, thanks for watching.